Hi everybody, Ava here. I recently started to learn one of the most useful, universal and underrated skills that you can have as a human being and that's the skill of making a fire. Honestly, this is a skill that we simply don't teach to people anymore and especially not to girls. Now, I'm not really very good at making fires yet and sometimes I find the process of it absolutely infuriating but today I'm going to share with you how to make a fire using only natural materials no fire start and nothing like that both inside and outside and honestly I think it's one of the coolest skills I have ever acquired if you take a look around me you'll see that I'm in an actual real life situation where I need to make a fire to keep me warm so over the last week I've been staying right here in this traditional centuries old cottage up on the mountainside in Romania and it's been gloomy and cold and raining for the last couple of days. There's no central heating here, nothing like that, only an actual stove that needs some manual fire making in order to get it to work. So before it gets too chilly in here today, I'm gonna dive right into the fire making. The first challenge that we're coming across here is that it has been raining these last few days so everything is soaked, wet. Um, and obviously in order to start a fire you need dry wood, that's like the first priority. Luckily there is a little wood shed right next to the house so that's where I'm going to get my dry wood from. Apart from the cobwebs and stuff, this shed is actual goals because look at how much firewood there is here. That's enough to last you like an entire season. <laughs> Making a fire actually takes a fair amount of planning. It's not as easy as it seems. So in order to do it successfully, you need to make sure that you prepare all of your materials in advance so that when you're there next to the stove or next to the fire pit, you can actually just focus 100% on the fire lighting process itself. So while I'm here in the shed, I'm going to pick out a bunch of chunks of wood of different sizes, making sure that they're super dry. So I'll grab a few large chunks, a few medium sized chunks, and if I can find any tiny chunks, then I'll get those as well. I like to sort my pieces of wood into four different sizes because when I start lighting the fire, I'm gonna have to start with these tiny little bits of wood before moving on gradually to these bigger chunks right here. But the thing is, I mostly have these big chunks. That's usually how firewood comes. So I'm gonna have to chop them up and make more of these tiny, small, little fire lighting pieces. And I'm gonna show you how to do that safely just now. You know, people sometimes seem to have this like lumberjack fantasy where they think that in order to chop up chunks of wood, you need like a massive axe and like a checkered shirt. <laughs> you don't need any of those things. I mean, for most women and girls, for me, for most people who don't have so much physical strength or training in using dangerous tools like an axe or a saw, there's a trick. You can actually just use a knife like this to chop up big chunks of wood. You're gonna need three items for this. The piece of wood that you wanna chop up, a knife, and a hammer. Or basically any item that you can use as kind of leverage that you can, you know, hit the knife with to give it a little bit more strength and power. So, let's get to work. Grab the chunk of wood that you wanna be cutting up and make sure that you position it vertically so that the sort of ridges that you see here are kind of aligned with your knife. Then, position your knife on top, whichever way is comfortable, grab your hammer, bang on the knife. Alright, here we go. And that is the wood being chopped up by a knife alone. Done. As easy as that. Oh, 
We're nowhere near done yet though. There's one more really important thing that you're gonna need and that is some sort of Tinder bundle. Something that lights up real easy and that's gonna basically turn your tiny little spark from your match or your lighter into a baby flame and then help spread it over the small pieces of wood. And that can be either something natural like um, birch bark, which burns really easily, or paper, which is what I'm gonna use. that this next part is where it gets a little bit harder. Now, of course, you could make your life really easy for yourself, buy some lighter fluid, douse the wood in it, and kaboom, you've got a massive fire right there. But that's not why we're here. So for this next part, you're gonna need a couple of things. One, number one, patience, which I have zero of. <laughs> and two, TP building skills. Let's go. burning for much much longer but you want to make sure that your teepee shape is still going allowing that air to flow in and out there we go ah shoot too many sparks come on come on this must be like one of the best feelings ever is to have this beautiful fire going in your home on a cold day so you can warm your hands in front of it have a cup of tea great gosh fires are really magical When I take all these lessons on board, I kind of start to realize that the process of learning how to make a fire, for me personally, has been a lot more than just about making physical fires. Actually for me it's been a lot about learning to be more patient and more meticulous and paying more attention to detail and that's a really great skill to have, maybe even more important than the skill of fire making. Thank you so much everybody for watching this vlog, I hope that it inspired you to pick up some new skills, whether it be fire making or something entirely different that you've been wanting to pick up for a while. Remember, the world belongs to the brave. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, then make sure that you do. And in the meantime, I'll see you in the next vlog. Mwah.